Hey everyone, I have a really exciting show for you today. I have a realtor, an investor, and someone who is taking action. He's turning commission checks into properties. And I just want to say, I think realtors are in a super special spot to do this. Not enough of you are. So let's welcome Omar to the show and we'll get into it. How you doing, Omar? Pretty good. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well, man. Thank you for reaching out. I think you have a special story. You're doing big things. And I think I just think more realtors need to do this. Before we get into the story, let's introduce Omar to my audience. You know, where you invest, what you do, how long you've been doing it, and we'll go from there. All right, sounds good. Thank you again. And my name is Omar Alfaro. I am a broker. I'm an investor. I've been in the real estate business for 17 years. Started when I was relatively young. <laughs> and I think I was 23. Okay. I was a bartender before at the MGM in Vegas. Nice. And I was doing that for a couple of years. And, you know, obviously that lifestyle is pretty fun. I'm sure everybody, <laughs> everybody can relate for sure. Um, and decided to see, you know, Hey, I, I needed a career. I didn't really know I was going to get into real estate whatsoever, but I just knew that I had a problem in Vegas. So, you know, 22, 23 years old, you have a good time. Oh yeah. You know, the story, the, so then I ended up moving back to the high desert, uh, in Apple Valley, California. Yep. And my parents owned a restaurant here. And I wanted to plug in and I just needed to change. Sure. So they needed some help um, at the restaurant. So I came back and I was just a waiter, you know, okay. waiter, waiting tables, not really knowing what I was doing, moved back in with uh, the family, which was strange at 23. Oh. And uh, I was sitting at the bar at our, at our restaurant. Somebody said, hey, you want to start selling real estate? And I said, I don't know how to do it, but what's going on? It's like sell houses, make commission checks. <laughs> that simple that that simple it was an old school broker and you know he pretty much um guided me through it and then i passed the test yeah he threw me in the snake's pit which i like to say because they yeah. were about 55 years old and i was 23 and i was the youngest person there so you can see what could happen oh, yeah. the old school mentality of real estate so after that um 17 years fast forward i uh sell a lot of homes buy a bunch and and the really the real reason I started getting into understanding this real estate market some more is because, you know, all the realtors out there spend all their commission checks, mm -hmm. and I didn't know like what I was going into, but I just knew that hey, I want to make a bunch of money because yep. that's attractive yep. and make a bunch of commission checks, and that's what we initially did. And when I bought my first house at twenty four, I was like, hey, this is what people do; they buy homes, yeah. and majority of all millionaires started in real estate period. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in the right field. I didn't know it still because my mindset wasn't clear yeah. on exactly what I wanted to accomplish. So then I started, you know, reaching out, listening, learning more because there was no training there. There was no online zoom. There was anything, right. you know, 17 years ago. So I was reading books yep. and everybody said, get into real estate, get into real estate. So I was just a producer. I was doing 10, 15 deals a year. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing crazy. Yeah. And I, when, when this market crashed in 2006, 2006, 2007, I knew a lot of people that, you know, they refinanced all their properties, <laughs> let them go. Yeah. They had eight, $900,000 worth of equity and just, and some people lost, some people uh, manipulated the system. Sure. And I saw that and I'm like, okay, all these people are buying these houses. I'm looking at their HUD once mm. um, and there's profits at the end. And this is how I started getting into flipping. I'm like, well, if this guy's just throwing lipstick on a pig, as everybody says, yeah. uh, I could do it better and make probably more profit because I kind of knew the game. And I was like, okay, this is where I'm going to start, you know, focusing my attention. And I just got better at my skills, my mindset. And wanted to help more people because if you help more people, you end up getting what you want later. Uh, and that's what I did. Sold a lot of homes. I sell about a hundred houses uh, a year Wow. myself personally. And with my office and team, my small team, you know, we do about 200, 250. And uh, fast forward now, I've got a good chunk of rental portfolio and flipped over a hundred and some houses throughout my career. And yeah, I'm just wanting to learn more and hopefully yeah. I can bring some value to you guys. That's awesome. I love that story. You know, it, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go down this timeline together because I think more and more people need to realize where you went through, right? 
and, and it's so interesting how today kind of mirrors what both of us went through when we started, right? You were right. a young man. You lived in a different city, frankly, a different state. You had some fun. You came home to help the family. You moved back in with your family. That, that, that's got to be a kick in the nuts. Yeah, for and, sure. And uh, it was just some, you know, fortuitous timing that a, a, you know, an old school broker said, hey, you want to you wanna make a bunch of cash, kid? And you're like, yep. yeah. So I'm curious, how long did it go from that first conversation to uh, you left the restaurant? Um, I never left the restaurant. Oh. And the reason being is because when you're a brand new agent, um, you don't have a database. You don't have people to talk to. Exactly. You, my, that broker gave me a, a telephone book and says, here, call people to see if they want to buy your stuff. Yeah. C- congratulations. I got, a, I got a book with thousands of contacts in it for you. <laughs> it, exactly. And it's like, are you serious? So I just started calling. No scripts. Uh, hey, this is Omar and you know, whatever company I was at before. Um, are you looking to buy or sell real estate? Yeah. Literally, that's all I would say all day, every day. And then I started understanding like, hey, I want to develop more conversations with people. So when I was waiting tables, because realtors don't start making a bunch of money right away. No. You know, some yeah. realtors don't make no money for the first two years because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And I just took all of my guests that I was waiting tables on and I would give them my business card. There you go. Every single check I would write out for them. Here you go if you know anybody that's looking to sell or buy. There you go. Every single one. I put them in a little, you know, little yeah. folder. Yeah. And that's how I literally started. And I got some people referring me and it was very minimal. Hey, more than zero. <laughs> very true. Yeah. Conversations help that, that, uh, that, that, that's a scale for sure. So when you got your first commission check, how long after that first conversation? Uh, it was a land deal. Okay. It was a three hundred thousand dollar land deal that I double ended. All right, so you put twelve grand in your pocket, fifteen. It was a ten percent commission. Oh, okay, all right. So I was hooked, just like Vegas hooks you when you win. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's always this easy. <laughs> uh, exactly right. So it was a double end deal. It was a tentative track map. I did sell like nothing but land initially because I didn't know about sure. houses too much. Okay. So I just sold land. land. And it was a 10% deal. I double ended it. And I was at a 60% split. Okay. Um, so it was, you know, a good yeah, 20 eight, grand or something. Yeah. 18,000. 18 grand. All right. Yeah. So again, how, how long was it? Six months, nine months, a year? Uh, that was, was probably a good, yeah, six, seven months. Yeah. And again, I'm, I'm doing all of this because people need to realize a lot of people get attracted to commission-based sales because they see the carrot. They don't realize right. the investment, i.e. you had to find a way to network. You had a day job. Right. The day job paid your bills, allowed you to live a life, you know, go to the movies, date some girls, whatever you want. Um, but you were, you were constantly building top of funnel, right? right. By putting your card in there. And uh, I, this ought to be interesting. What'd you do with that first 18 grand? What, what'd you go do? Oh, <laughs> what the, stupid uh, thing did you do? Because <laughs> at, at, at that point, I hadn't bought a house yet. Okay. Okay. I bought my first house at 24. I was licensed at 23. Okay. And that was November of that year uh, when I was 23. So I took it, you know, and I bought some rims for my car. Uh, <laughs> we always do and, that, right? We yeah, just I, blow it. Yeah, we, we, I blew it. I did keep about five grand only. I don't know oh. where the other money came. But okay. then my dad was forcing me, hey, you got to buy a house, mijo. You got to buy a house. Right. I said, okay. So at that time, uh, the market hadn't taken off yet, which okay. was cool. Yeah. And I bought my first house for 150 K and that's in California, right? The inland empire yeah. or in, in Apple Valley, California, Apple Valley. which is about 35 minutes, 40 minutes of Rancho Cucamonga. There you go. Okay. Very yeah. cool. All right. So, um, this must be like 2004 ish. Uh, yeah. 2000. Yeah. 2004. Yeah. Three, yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's right, right where you said it hadn't taken off yet. I'm like, I know exactly what period this is. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been there. Um, so, okay. You move it. So you're out of the house now. This is your house. You, you move. Yep. It's not a rental. It's yours. No, my home. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Uh, still working at the restaurant. Yeah. Still, because it was literally, <laughs> I, I don't know how my dad did this, but he's like, Hey, Michael, there's this one house. You got to buy it. And I went and checked it out. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is cool. It's perfect. Two minutes from the restaurant. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so what happens? Yeah, I'm at my house. I got a roommate to pay my mortgage payment because this is back in the day with an 80-20 loan. Oh, there you go. first, 20% second, okay. stated income. I didn't make any money. I just uh, stated I made money. Nice. Right? Yeah, just, I remember. Just to get this deal. Yeah. And yeah, literally two minutes and I was still working the bar shift at nighttime. I, I loved it because that's what was in me. I, I yeah. knew the hospitality business for so long that I wanted to make sure I took care of more guests. Yeah, of course. You know? Yeah. That makes yeah. total sense. All right. So now, so now you have a house, you're still uh -huh. working your, what I'll call your day job. It was the night job, but you had, you had a day responsible or you had a responsibility. You're For still sure. building your funnel. You have proof yeah. it works, right? You've cashed a check at least one, if not more. Yeah. Um, when does, when does that first kind of rotation build? So the market's probably rising. I'm, yeah, I'm guessing you start selling a lot more stuff. Oh, five, Oh six. I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, we sold and not substantially. Like I, I, I didn't really get to the producing aspect of it until I understood how to talk better to people and okay. understand like that flow. Yeah. So that 05, 06, I was relatively new still. Yeah. Okay. Only true. two, three, two, three years in. And right now people in this business with technology, everybody seems to get it faster. Right. Yeah. But back then it was just a little bit slower sure. and it was more grinding, more door knocking, more this, more that. Um, so in 05, 06, yeah, you breathed and you could sell a property mm -hmm. and I like right now. Yeah, exactly. That's, again, um, it is so scary how today is similar to that period. So similar. <laughs> yeah. And people that shouldn't have been in the business are in the business and you know, McDonald's employees are getting the real estate licenses and they're selling real estate. Happen so again. Yep. That's the scary part. Yep. So it was a good, I don't know. I think we did maybe 15 deals in 06 which was okay. Okay. And that wasn't great, but they were, you know, some houses were 200, 210. Yeah. But you probably made, you, you made more selling real estate that year than you did at the bar. I'm guessing. Yes, I, I did that. That first year I definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that just becomes a proof point, right? Right. When you, right. Right. When you make, cause you go into that year, real estate's your second job, right? Correct. It's, it's the other. You get to the end of the year, you file your taxes and you're like, holy shit, I made more selling real estate than the restaurant. At some point it becomes, okay, dad, I'll spot fill you when somebody's sick or something. I'm going to go sell a lot more real estate, right? Does that conversation happen somewhere? Um, you know what? It, it, it does. It didn't happen until like probably two, three years ago oh. though, Michael, because okay. I'm, a, I'm a family guy and yeah. obviously they took care of us for so long sure. that I also enjoyed being there though. Nice. And doesn't matter if I was making 10, 15 grand a, a month in real estate. Yeah. I still was there and people would say, oh, you know what? Hey, real estate market's not that well, right? I was like, no, no, it's not. And I never, because I still waited tables. Yeah. And I would make my $20 a, a table or whatever the case, it's gas yeah. money. Yeah, right. But I always had an avenue of like, all right, just how I took the restaurant business and helping more guests or having more tables. Yeah. I did the same mentality with real estate. Nice. help one more client a yeah. month, two more clients a month, and then you can start scaling. So let's, so I'd be curious about um, how Apple Valley did kind of, let's talk about when the market rolled over. Let's just call it 08. I don't know if it was seven, eight or Ooh, nine. Yeah. There. Uh, let, so the market's going down now, right? You're starting to see short sales and foreclosures. Um, what was going on in your business? What was going on? Because real estate stopped for a while. Oh, real estate completely stopped yeah. when everything dropped, like literally everything just fell apart. Yeah. And in our market, it fell hard. Yeah. And I'm sure everywhere else. I mean, we went from, you know, $180 a square foot, 200 bucks a square foot to $30 a square foot. Jesus. Yeah. So 30 bucks, a, wow. 30 bucks a square foot. And in 09 or 08, we started seeing that trend. We got into the short sale aspect of it yeah. because a lot of the clients that I sold houses to couldn't afford their houses anymore. I remember. Yeah. And then they called me back. Hey, we can't afford it. We'll short sell. We're short sell. No problem. Right. Some people let them go to the bank. Yep. And I was fortunate to get in touch with some um, asset managers. Sure. And at that time I was getting fed some, you know, slowly that it started, that faucet started opening up and started receiving some assignments yeah. from banks. Yeah. I mean, let's just recognize that. And I want to recognize it because we both experienced it. I'm not calling for anything similar to that, this go around. No. Some people are, 
Some people are. I'm not. I, I don't see it. I, I mean, I don't, mathematically, I don't see how it happens, but let's just realize that if it were to happen, it is extremely traumatic on families. You, you see, you see pain and I never want to go through that again. It was um, not a fun couple. I mean, it was very profitable, but as a human being, it, it was, it was painful. Super painful when, when you had to go door knock that property to yeah. let people know that the house isn't theirs anymore. Yeah. It's and, just been sold. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And then here you go. Here's uh, here's some cash for keys. Can yeah. you get out? I was that guy. Yeah. It was horrible. It was horrible. All right. So let's, let's get out of that again. I'm not calling for that, yeah. but it could, it, it will happen again. I don't know if it's five years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, you know, crazy, crazy. It was all crazy lending, right. That, right. that did it. Uh, but when did your business change from earning commission checks and buying toys like rims to, you know what? I can start being like the rich buying assets, right? The rich, the millionaires hold it in real estate, either earned it or hold it in real estate. When did that mental yep. shift or what was it that caused that for you? As a matter of fact, it was a, uh, one of my own um, assignments that I, I received from a bank. Okay. It was a, uh, a house that they wanted eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 for at the time. All right. And then it, we started lowering it because nobody was buying it. Yeah. And then it dropped down to thirty or to $40,000. Okay. And it was one of my properties yep. that the bank gave me. And I said, listen, it's not moving. Um, and mind you, it sold for $240,000 oh. in 2006. Yep. So that small little house was my first investment property. I asked around, I had relationships that I built at the restaurant that were already millionaires in real estate and they were my guests and I'd buy them a, I'd buy, I'd buy them a margarita or whatever else. Yeah. And he was somewhat of a mentor to me. And he said, he told, he told me this, uh, in real estate, you make commissions just to get by, yeah. but you turn your commissions into profits to get rich. And you took and you take your profits to buy houses or or commercial buildings to get wealth. There you go. And he told me this, and I remembered it. And so I came straight to him. I said, "Listen, Mike was his name. Mike, I need a loan. I need to buy a house. I have uh, you know eight thousand um, dollars. Would you lend me some money?" Hmm. And he lent me um, thirty seven thousand dollars. Okay. On that one property, he was a deed of trust holder. Yep. He took advantage, like he literally saw it in me and I was like, let's go. And this was in 2010. I bought that property. No, 2009. Sorry. 2009. I bought the property $31 a square foot. <laughs> and that was my first home that I bought as a rental. Right. Never flipped it. I just kept it. And I started understanding this and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I knew that I couldn't go back to him. I probably could have, he probably had more money, but I'm like, let me go you know, make some feelers out there. Let me expand a little bit. Right. So then I got introduced to um, hard money. Yep. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. So I nice. started buying. Yeah. And this is buy and hold, mind you. I never flipped. Yeah. I started buying these houses with hard money uh, at 12% at two or three points. It was yeah. expensive. I did the same. And I bought four or five of them at 60,000, 72,000. And I still own them all now. Yes, They're all paid for, which is great. And it was two houses on a lot that I bought uh, for like $72,000. And I'm like, there's no way that this will ever be yeah. this cheap. So I need to buy as many as I can. <laughs> I love it. And, and this is where the restaurant came in okay. because obviously if I'm buying, I got, I got to, I got to make that payment. Yeah. Right. If, if, if no renters in there and I didn't have extra money to fix the houses up. So I had to do it by working more at the restaurant and um, ha helping more people sell their, you know, sell their homes or help yeah. them in res regular, regular re residential real estate. That's awesome. Uh, so again, let's talk, I always like to talk about the first deal. Um, okay. So 31 bucks a square foot. Uh, what was it? Was it like, oh, was it, you said built in 06 or was it purchased in 06? No, it was sold in 2006 for 240. Yeah. It's an old home. It's okay. a 1960s built home. Okay. So like a um, three one or something. Exactly. A three one on 1.1 acres. Oh, and it was just thrashed. 
had a beehive in it, a bunch <laughs> of freaking bees every. Oh yeah, it was it was when, insane. Yeah, God, it was. Yeah, two two thousand. My most transactions in a year was two thousand ten. Wow. Uh, where I think Fresno was probably a year behind you. Okay. But yeah, we were. I mean, I think the lowest I paid for a house was twenty eight grand. Oh, that's so awesome. A two bedroom, one bath on like a twelve thousand square foot city lot. It, you know, a double lot. Right. But it was, it was trash. Homeless were living in there. For sure. You know, all the stuff that you would expect in there was in there. But yeah, 28 grand. Own it today. It's worth 250-ish. Rents exactly. for like 1100 it. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no problem. All right. So now you go, you go on a buying spree. You figure out hard money. Does it ever go back to private money for you? Like, do you ever go, hey, 12%, two points is expensive. Let's go back to private money like your first deal or... Where does that go? Um, yeah, but it, it comes in a stride because that market, I, I wanted to see if I could do it myself. I wanted okay. to put myself in a corner mm -hmm. and fight through this and get and develop that skill sure. back then, not really knowing what I knew now, mm -hmm. but yeah. I just was doing it and I see it, you know, looking at it. I'm like, oh, I was doing that already. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted just to learn how to become better at listing property to increase my top line. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. And that's what I did. Now, fast forward, obviously, it's a different conversation. I don't, I mean, I, I use hard money, but it's cheap. Put it yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah. Once you get experience, you know the right people, it does get cheaper. But in the beginning, you're, t you're happy to take 12%, two, three points. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now let's, again, because we have the same track record. Um, I, know, I remember there was a day, I think it was in 2012. It might have been 11. I think it was 12, where... I mean, for me, it was every Monday, I would look at the MLS and there'd be another batch of listings, right? Because I, I was not a realtor. I had no special access. I just learned that the new postings came every Monday at 7 a.m. So That's I would cool. look at 7.05 and I'd go, okay, I want that one and that one and that one. And then I remember one Monday going, huh, where'd they all go? Right, there's no new listings. And I'm like, ah, maybe the, maybe the upload or whatever the freaking heck it's called didn't work. And I look, check back later in the day, I'm like, nothing. I'm like, it's weird. And then the next week, nothing. And then I start calling around. Basically what happened in my market is the hedge funds came out of nowhere and were buying tranches of properties. Right. And meaning like the whole spreadsheet. Don't even bother listening and we'll pay asking. Did that yep. happen in your market? Just like overnight it changed? Not overnight. No, okay. but all the hedge funds, people were buying bulk. Yeah, it was weird. They it was were a definitely different buying time, bulk. right? Yeah. It's like, for me, again, it was like, you guys are nowhere to be found. I'm literally picking up gold bricks on the ground to where they all go. Exactly. It was weird. All right. So, what, so now that the market starts to heal itself, it's amazing what happens when you lose 30 or 40% of the inventory because hedge funds are buying. Um, when did the market to you start to feel like we're healing ourselves? Oh, geez. I would say probably 2000 yeah 2013 yeah, 14 makes sense um and what i what i want to share is in 2013 and 14 you know i had already been selling a, a good amount of you know reos yep and i just kept in touch with all of those people that bought my houses that that i had listed oh genius cuz most uh, uh, agents weren't going to follow up with their clients. Yeah, nobody, none of the ones I used followed up with me. That's no simple. And, nice and it's, so I followed up with the majority, a good chunk, whatever I could do. And those are the ones that started coming back to me, you know, yeah. for your database. Yeah. And they say, Hey, can I sell my house now? You, you keep sending me stuff. Yeah, no problem. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Because I, I knew it was going to end up happening. Yeah. And I just didn't know how to do it. And I didn't know about databases. I didn't know about any of that shit. So I just said, hey, I'm going to send them a letter every Customer quarter. Customer service. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Because if you let them know that, hey, you're still in the business. Yeah. They, they bought a great property from you. Not from me directly, yeah. but I was the, the vehicle. Yeah. And you know what? It's time for them to move up or upgrade or, you know. Or cash in. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Hey, your house doubled. I mean, if you were buying in 2010, it really didn't take very long for your house to double, right? Mm -hmm. Buying at 31 bucks a square foot when the permits are 50 bucks a square foot, it really doesn't take a long for you to double or even triple. Yeah. Um, so I remember there were a bunch of people that were buying in 2010 with me. 
more than half of them were completely sold out by 2015 or 16. Like they had nothing left. I'm like, whoa, that was a mistake. Because again, real estate builds wealth, but you have to hold it. You have to hold it for a long period of time. And, and I went through that and I wanted to like, oh my God, I got all this equity in this yeah. one house. And, and I did. And there's about three or four that I probably should have kept. Yeah. But I ended up selling, you know, to create extra profit yeah. so I can start flipping and you know, doing other yeah. things. Right. You had a plan, and, but yeah. too many. This is the one thing, again, going back to the opening with realtors is this is a tremendous business. You can make relatively fast cash, significant cash. But don't buy toys. Toys are expensive. Um, have a plan, right? Earn, invest, and then play with what's left over, right? Exactly. Right. Play and, with- and you know what? I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll share this. I never bought a brand new car. Oh, there uh, we go. I like okay? it. Yeah. And I've dr- I drove my Cadillac Escalade when I started making more money in 2012 and 11 or something like that. And I paid it cash. And I drove it for 240,000 miles on it. Nice. With one transmission, it all wheel drive, and it, it lasted a long time. Yeah. And I bought a truck, and because I need it in my area, because it's all dirt. Yeah. Uh, or majority of it's dirt. And then I bought a car. Okay. It was just all they're all used. Yeah. Not until 2018. No, was it 2018? Yeah, 2018 December. Just recently, I had to buy something to offset some taxes. Yeah, makes sense. So. That, that's when I bought a, uh, a nice vehicle, you know, and, and then long story short, I gave it back and they pay me all my money back and I'm not going to go buy another car. I'm going to go buy another house. <laughs> there you go. So now let's talk to realtors specifically. I love the story. We went through the timeline. It's all awesome. But let's talk to the, let's talk to, hmm, let's talk to you year one. You're you now, but let's okay. pretend we're talking to you, the guy sitting at the bar. Oh, this right? is cool. Okay. Yeah. So let's so, have that conversation, right? Um, right. Yeah, let's have that conversation. So again, you're the, you're, you're the old experienced guy with a bunch of units, bunch of successful flips, bunch of big commissions. You see something in this young guy at the bar. You see something. And we've all done it. Like you've got it, customer service, action oriented. You, th- you see it. How do, how do you have that conversation? What do you tell them? How do you encourage them to take action? Because that is the missing piece for most people. It's, people see the carrot, as I said earlier, the possibilities, but most people lack the action. So how do you, how do you, how do you poke that? How do you make that happen? That's a huge question. Um, and it's awesome because I, I tell people I see now, new agents that come into our office and our team, and I share with them, and this is something I would share with that person, you know, year one, um, you know, find out why you're doing the business. Like, why are you getting into this business? Okay. Are you doing it just because you want to um, make extra cash or are you doing it for the long haul? Because this is a, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. You can make sprint money, but it's the longer you're in the business to um, formulate your skills. And my number one thing that I would share with everyone is customer service and your database everyone that ends up buying a house from you whether it's one a year two a year five a year make them feel like they're freaking special because they will always refer you more business if you want to go that long if you want to be in business for 10 15 20 years 30 years yeah no problem because things happen you might change you might not like the real estate business no more because you're selling but this is the thing you're providing value to someone to help them end up buying something that they probably, that's going to be their biggest purchase ever in their lifetime. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Cause it was mine. And I'm like, this is perfect. I got a house <laughs> a roommate, 600 bucks a month. That was my cut. That was, I'm good. I'm done. Done. I made I, it. I made it. Woo, woo. Yep. That's it. <laughs> but then you start seeing more. You're like, Hey, there's more to that than just buying a house. Yeah. You know, there's the experience and everything else. So I would definitely say, what's your why? Why are you doing it? I mean, is it to retire mom and dad? Is it, is it to, you know, make more money for your family? And the thing is you have to trade. Like I'd rather, I think I heard, I heard it somewhere, but I'd rather not get paid per hour mm-hmm. and know that I can go make a thousand, 1500 bucks an hour because most places that you're going to go to, or most people that, that have jobs, they're maxed yeah. at 
20 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour, yeah. regardless of how much more money or how much more time you put into it, how much more effort, how much more sweat and tears you put into that job, you can only get paid X. Yeah. You have bonuses and stuff, but in my case, is I've never been a, uh, an employee. When I was at the restaurant business, yeah, sure, but we made our money by tips, yep. by servicing people. Yep. So take that, service people in this industry, and remember, it's going to take some time. Hmm. College takes four years right, to get your degree, but you don't, mean, you don't make shit afterwards. Yeah. You still got to go find a job. Now, imagine if you took that and you learned in four years on what you need to do to become better at this business, you'll make 200, 200, 200, 300 thousand dollars your fourth year. Mm -hmm. You yeah. should be able to. And then if you get into the aspect of flipping or wholesaling or whatever else, that's just added, but learn the basics, the foundation of figuring out how to service more people in that industry. Mm -hmm. Use it as school. I mean, this yeah. is like the best education that, that, that normal school would give you, period. Yeah, so I, I've enjoyed this conversation so much because I have, I've just come up with, I literally just came up with this two minutes ago and I wrote it down. You know, being a realtor or a real estate agent, broker, you really have three options back to your why. And tell me if you don't agree because it literally just, just came to me. One, it could be a job, right? It could be your job. It's just going to be selling 10, 12 houses a year, four or five, whatever it is. It's a job. It's a second income. Two, it could be a career, right? Some people treat it as a career. It's like, this is what I'm going to do for the next 40 years. I'm going to do some client management. I'm going to do these things, but I'm always going to be the realtor. Right. And then there's folks like you. You have it as a platform, right? Yep. It serves a, it's the foundation but it is only the foundation. You take it, it builds or spins off cash and you build other stuff on top of it. Um, Correct. Buy and hold business, a flipping business, right? It, it will always, it's, to me, it sounds like it will always be your foundation. It will always be something, but you, you really don't live on it, right? It serves what you're building on your foundation. Is that fair? 100%. That's a good analogy. It's, it's a good way to, it's a good example on what different avenues you could take if you're a realtor. And again, yeah. And again, just be what I, what I would tell you, if that's true, right. Job career or platform is you need to be honest with yourself. The last thing you want to do is call yourself a platform, but act like a job. Exactly. Right. That's where you get in trouble. Right. Um, because it just takes other things to be successful. And if you're not doing, if you're fooling, that's what people at least in this wealth generation, this financial freedom that everybody talks about, everybody has the vision because it's sexy to say. But not many people are putting in the bite-sized chunks in the years like you have to, to really see a clear path to financial freedom. And that's why I think you've got to be really clear, clear on saying what your why is and then what you want and make sure that they're in alignment. Correct. Yeah. 100%. All right. So, so now we're talking to you at the table. I want to go back to this and just see how much fun it gets. So uh, we're going to pretend it's you again. And you're the, it's weird. It's you and you. It's really weird in my head as I'm saying this. Uh, but you're talking to this kid, young guy. You, he's telling you he wants to have a platform, right? He wants to use real estate investing as that bigger, as the thing that, that makes you the millionaire. Okay. What are some pieces of advice you give them? Because again, they're, they don't want the job. They don't even want the career. They want the bigger the bigger piece, what kind of stuff do you tell them to start getting on right now? Number one is uh, know your market. There you go. For sure. I mean, that's, everybody has different markets, mm -hmm. you know, and I would say develop your skills so quickly that even a veteran will lose against you because the veteran thinks that it's just coming to him automatically right. when then there's this kid that's, that's learning and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing mm -hmm. to get better in front of sellers and buyers. Mm -hmm. You know, all these veterans I see, um, they've been doing the business a long time, Yeah, but have a conversation with them and see toe to toe on like, what's a, not a canned listing presentation or a canned right. buyer, uh, a presentation either, but to see how well, they um they react to a rebuttal yeah that's that's the difference it's like get so good at understanding people 
and what they're going to be saying, but know it before they're going to say it to you. Yeah. So you already know what to say and remove that, that, that little jab because yeah, it's a jab. It's not a knockout punch. No. Yes. It's, it's just a jab. So remove it, block it. Yeah. And then, you know, and then it opens up because their hands are going to fall and that's when they sign the contract. Yeah. You know what I would tell someone again, this, this may be too ambitious for a 20 year old or 23 year old, but this is what I would tell them is I would tell them again, if you want to make it this platform and you want to be in the top 100, 200, 1000, depending on how big your city is investors, um, you know, you should spend a year trying to figure out who the top 50 or hundred are mm -hmm. because there, it's not that hard to figure it out. And then I would do everything I could to be, find a way to have service to them. Right. For example, somebody found me somehow, some way, some new rookie agent in Fresno, California. What I would do for a guy like me who, who you can clearly see doesn't live there is I would drive by seven, eight, nine of my properties, take pictures, take notes. And I would send it to me with an introductory email or even, even print them out and mail the damn thing. You want to get me to call you back? Do something for me unexpectedly. Be of service. Smart. I'm going to give you a lunch for that. Right. For sure. Right. And so, value. <laughs> and, oh yeah, dude. I'm going to reciprocate in kind and, and over the top. Believe me. Yeah. Right. So I would go out of my way that first year. I would, I would tell me, right. I'd say, all right, Zuber. Cause you know, we're, 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 we're like that Zuber. Um, I want you to come back to me once a month or once every 90 days with a list of 15 of the top 100 folks that you've met with. Go figure it out. Because the reason you want to do that as a platform is if you can get in that circle, it opens up. Every, it's just rain, right? So that's probably what I would do. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah. See, so I like cool. this. I like this talking to guys that know what's going on. I think that's what I would do, uh, which would be very different if it was a job, right? Because then it's like, then it's like handing your business card out, telling everybody you're doing. It's just a different mindset, different right? Mindset. Yeah. yeah different mindset for sure. All right. So what's going on in your market today? Cause my market has no freaking inventory. It is bare bones. What's going on today? It's the same as your market. Obviously there's no inventory, tons of offers on all of our listings, tons of offers. Like, give me an example. Like one of your listings you threw out at X and it went for X, what X plus. Uh, one of my listings I threw out at three forty nine nine. It was yeah. decent. Cool. We got, I don't know, 17, 18 offers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt with my laughter. So you got 17 offers at 350 rounding. What did it end up going for? 400. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, th th again, I laugh because this, again, I've been doing this so 20 06, years. Man. Uh, it's weird, right? Even yeah. in 06 though, it wasn't this nuts. I don't remember... Because the, the interest rate wasn't this low and, and, and real estate wasn't as sexy. Yeah, this is the thing. That's real estate exactly. Wasn't as sexy. And it now is coming everybody back. wants to fucking, or I'm sorry, freaking, everybody wants to buy houses. Yeah, everybody wants weird. to upgrade. They want to sell their property down the hill and come up here. And it, it wasn't as sexy as it was back then. Now everybody seems to qualify for a property mm -hmm. nowadays because yeah. obviously, you know, that trajectory has happened the last you know, yeah. seven, eight years. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird. Um, again, 20 years, myself, yourself, 17. I have never see, I'll see if this is true in your market, my market. I've never seen it. So dominated by owner occupants, even in 06, it was about 60, 40. And it's it was owner occupants dominated. were 60 investors were 40 today. It's like 90, 10. Everyone's buying a home to stay. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Owner occupied. You, you said it. Yep. Yeah. And again, again, I'm an, I'm a simple person, right? So if that's what's going on today, owner occupants are d dominating the market. I am buying every piece of junk that doesn't qualify FHA, 100%. fixing it up and selling it to an FHA buyer. Does that make sense? Yep. <laughs> Makes complete sense. Man. So I'm doing the same thing. Sa same thing. I'm trying to get any ugly, at, ugly house. Yeah. I don't care how it looks. Let's go. I'll make it look great. And FHA away. <laughs> Yeah. It's how long do you think this can last? Cause again, 20 years experience, never been this dominant. It can't, there's two things that are going to fix this. Either prices are going to go up so high that it's unaffordable again, okay. possible. 
right? Prop, I don't know. It's possible. Or at some point next year, inventory is going to come back on the market. We have so many people staying put. It's no inventory. The, thing is, the people that are staying put are waiting. Yeah. So, and, and the thing is, and there's all this stuff that's behind that we don't see yet. Yeah. And then as, as the builders start building more, oh, houses, yeah, they're going to supply the demand, but at a different price point, it'll be exactly. up here. Yes. So what the, what's that going to do? Yeah. The retail side? It's going to pull it up. Oh my God. It, it literally like I, I kind of, I want to keep everything. Yeah. At the same time, I don't because it's like, oh my gosh, it's never hit this number. That house, yeah. that funny story, that house I bought for 40 grand yeah. right now, I could probably get 230 K for it. And it, and it's paid me a great number of, you know, it's been rented for 11 years. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's like, do I sell it at what it was in 2006 or do I just keep it again and just keep that cash flow and then wait for it to hit 300 K? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if California association of realtor does the affordability index for Apple, Apple Valley, because it might be yeah. too small. No, Apple Valley, Hesperia, it's called the high desert. Okay, high desert. So it does it for the high desert, yeah. Yes, as a whole. And I think we're about two, I think we jumped up to about 289. Yeah, so that's our... the median. But do yourself a favor. Go back and look at what's called the affordability index. Okay. Because again, I'll just give you Fresno's number. I'm going to guess they're similar. So we're coming out like 0304. Fresno's affordability is like 48, 47, which means half the people can buy the average home. That's a safe market. Right. Right at the peak, like 08, it gets down under 20. So that's when you get funny lending, right? We're doing liar loans and yes, right, all that stuff. So the reason I bring that up, and you should go check it out, because right now in my market of Fresno, it's actually 50. So it's better than it was in 04, 05, but it's all because of interest rates. Right. right? So even though the median is 50K higher, the payments are lower than 06. So what I'm going to do is wait for the affordability to get to like 20, which means prices could go up 40%. Then I'll sell. And they will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Over, over, a, it could go for a couple of years. It's, I've never seen this, man. It is wacky. And, and it, it, it's, it's scary, but then it's like, you want to sell, but then you want to keep because it's like, what if it goes up another 10%? Well, again, so that's, that's why I'm telling you go back and look at affordability, right? So for me, I, I'll sell every problem house at 20 okay. and I will sell every single house I own at 15. If Fresno at affordability, you'll sell every, every single house, every single house, 15. I, I'm writing this down because this is something where at 20%, I'll sell the problem. 15%. Okay. At 15, everything goes. Now I'm not saying houses will get that unaffordable. I'm just saying if they ever do, they're gone. And this takes care of the, do I sell? Do I not sell? I just use the affordability index. It comes out once a month. And you, the beauty in California is you can go back and look at it for 30 years. So go back and look at the high desert and you'll see the affordability index do this, right? Waves. Right. And when it's, I want to sell when affordability is low and I want to buy when it's high. And in my market, it screams 20, be concerned. And if, if it gets to 15, every house I own is gone. Everyone. Because you, you can't make that money anymore. No, you can't. It, it's just, it tells you that you're, you're basically lending to every deadbeat that's left. That's what that means. So I'll just wait. Could it go lower? Sure. But history says you can go back and look at the chart. It will come back. 15%. And I'm, and I'm going to put this on my wall so I see it every single day because yeah. that, and I'm just going to keep buying. If it's at 30, 40% affordability, yeah, it's fine. you're safe. Buying everything. Yeah, because again, the affordability index is made of three variables. Interest rate, which is roughly half of what it was in 06. Right. Price, price is up like 20% from 06 or 10%. But again, yeah. interest rate's a bigger thing. And then average income, right? Average income in the high desert is probably a little higher than it was in 06. But it's just the collection. Little. Yeah, just a little. It's the collection of those three variables that drive affordability. So, so could income go down by half? Not likely. Could prices go up by 50%? Yeah. What time? Don't know. The big one is interest rates, right? Could interest rates shoot up? They could. I don't think they're likely. The Fed's on record saying not for years. So I think we got years of appreciation ahead of us.
if, if that's the case, then yeah, we're I'm keeping everything. Yeah, look at the numbers. So I don't know high desert, but go spend ten minutes. Go get go get the high desert from like two thousand to twenty twenty, and just see how the index changes. Okay, that's good. Appreciate that, Michael. Thank you. You got that's, that's Omar. Big. You got it. Omar. Any way uh, people can follow you, check out, reach out to you if they want to buy something. Uh, how can they get a hold of you? Oh uh, yeah, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. It's uh, Omar underscore Alfaro. So I probably should have put it in my in my tagline there, but I don't okay. know if I could rename myself. I'll, I'll listen to the actually. first line. I'm gonna do that now. Oh good. And there it is. There you go. I will make that as your first line on. In uh, it, sh it should be anyways. Yep. I see it there. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Uh, thank you very much for doing this, man. We got to do it again. Uh, and let me know what you find out when you look up uh, the high desert. I will, Michael. Thank you so much of it as well. Cause I really did. I appreciate you. You got it, brother.